Look at these people. They're taking care of themselves. They're trying to be sustainable. She's back. She got back. <laughs> she didn't stay away. She came back. I did. And we tried to record it at the station. Well. Airport. Airport. I didn't know he was going to record it. I saw it in his hand later, but. We were too busy running to each other and hugging and kissing. And, yeah, I missed him so much. <laughs> no more separate vacations. <laughs> um, I haven't been asleep in about 30 hours. Very tired. But there's a couple of things that really touched my heart that I wanted to, to tell you about. So many things touched my heart while I was there. And I have so much to tell you about nutrition and things like that. But right now, I, I wanted to tell you about um, some women. We went to church on Sunday, and when we went into the congregation, instead of there just being a mom and a dad and their children and congregation, they were all women. And we found out they were all Philippine women. And there was about a hundred of them. And when they sang, they sounded like angels. It was so beautiful. It was an honor to be in their presence. And they would greet us and hold our hands. And um, it was just really, really sweet. Well, I found out that what they, we thought they were like migrant workers who had come over from the Philippines. And we found out that's not what they are. They are, many of them, many, many of them married, left their family, their children, their husbands, and they came to Hong Kong to work because Hong Kong is very rich. Okay, beyond rich that I've ever seen. I mean, Lamborghinis are just there, you know. A Tesla is like a Volkswagen bug. It, they're everywhere. So it's rich. So they come there to Hong Kong to be nannies and housekeepers and cooks and the house boy, but I guess the house girl, uh, for these rich families there. And they send their money back to support their families. And um, they just had such a sweet spirit about them. And I remember sitting there thinking, well, what happens to the ones that don't get Sunday off? You know, how do they ever get to go to church? And then we found out afterwards from talking to some of the leaders that they hold church seven days a week so that everybody gets a chance to come to church and on their day off on their day off and every congregation has at least a hundred people in it so that was so amazing to us and it touched my, me it touched my son and it touched my grandchildren um just so many sweet sweet people um, one other thing is we went, we would wander into the poorer areas of China when we were up in Beijing and um, be able to see how the, I want to say normal, the average people live or below, or the, you know, below rich live there and be in the country and we saw some of the old clothing that you typical think of China and we went into a little tiny I mean tiny it had three tables in a little tiny restaurant ran by a gentleman and he was so thrilled that we came in there and we chose his place and um, there were five of us and we gave him a nice uh, living for the day and he played his instrument, which was this long, I don't know, s stringed instrument with a bow. And it sounded very, well, when we played it, it didn't sound like anything. When he played it, it sounded like the Chinese sound, but he could actually make a tune with it and he would sing with it. So it was really wonderful. Those are just a couple of the experiences. I'll tell you one more as we were leaving that restaurant. No, as we were leaving the old section. We wove through some of their, not even streets, uh, they're built in little courtyards and things. And so we went through some of the courtyards and some of them were like three feet wide is all. 
And I thought, oh my goodness, we're going to be walking right into their house. And I felt like we were invading their space. But a couple of them came out and they were so gracious. And I found this most amazing thing. And I'm not sure if I'm going to get to download it for this one, but it was boxes that were sitting by their doors, just boxes. And in those boxes was their garden that they had just planted for the spring. And I was so moved by that. I just thought, look at these people. They're taking care of themselves. They're trying to be sustainable in as much as they can be sustainable. So it was a wonderful experience. I, um, I am so, so grateful for the opportunity that my son gave me to be able to go. And I learned so much and I learned a lot about, like I said, nutrition, and we're definitely going to be sharing that. For today, I'm catching up on 10 days of Justin Rhodes videos, and it's got Joel Salatin on there, so I'm super excited. And I'm just going to hold on to this guy and not let him and go. And she also has to catch up on 10 days of hardiness approach oh, videos. Yes, that you made all by yourself. Oh my They're goodness. They're not very good. Hey, I am so proud of you for making them. So anyway, I'm going to hopefully get some sleep tonight. And for tomorrow's video. Yeah, we, we stopped by on the way home today um, because we were in Portland. We stopped by Red Mill, Bob's Red Mill, and uh, we videotaped some ourselves in there and this, interviewed. This is their their one and only retail store. It's where every product that they sell and ship is available and also in bulk and a restaurant and it's just down the street from their factory where they do whatever processing that they do in packaging. So that's tomorrow. Good night.